Welcome to your 20th session. And today we're going to continue with hypothesis testing, but we're going to look at hypothesis testing for the proportion. Before we start today's event, I'm going to do a recap on what we did on Saturday, and then we'll start with the session. So on Saturday, we looked at the hypothesis testing for the mean when the population standard deviation is unknown and we said when it's unknown <clears throat> then we use the t test statistic we also said because we're doing hypothesis testing you always need to remember the six steps of hypothesis testing which which we're still going to use even today when we do hypothesis testing for the mean. And we looked at an example of hypothesis testing when we are doing a two-tailed test. And we said you st if you are given the information that uh, the average cost of a hotel room in New York is said to be 168 to determine if this is true, and you are given also the random sample of 25 that was selected and they calculated and found that the mean average of or the average of the sample is 17250 and the standard deviation which is the sample standard deviation therefore this population standard deviation is unknown is 1540 and we needed to test the hypothesis at alpha equals to zero. And because they just said the room is said to be, they never said it's greater than or it's less than, so therefore it means it's equal. So it will be a two-tailed test. And the first step of hypothesis, we know that you state your null hypothesis and alternative. Then you also state what you are given in terms of alpha n and And since we're going to be going to the t-table, then we need the degrees of freedom, so we can calculate the degrees of freedom as well. And you can also identify um, whether are you doing what kind of a test, and that's step number three. And because your population standard deviation is unknown, therefore we're going to be doing a test a t test statistic and step number four is to find the critical value by using alpha divided by two because we're doing a two tail test so it means our alpha we're going to divide it by two to go find the critical value and the degrees of freedom and the critical value helps us with the region of rejection it will identify if uh, we need to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. And step number five, oh, sorry, six. You yeah. Step number five is to calculate the test statistic. And calculating the test statistic, we find that it was 1.46, and then we can go and use the critical value and the test statistic to make a decision. And then step number six is to make your conclusion after you made your decision, you conclude. So the same concepts we're still going to continue with today when we do hypothesis testing for the proportion. By the end of the session, you should know how to use hypothesis testing for the proportion or you should be able to test the hypothesis for the proportion. When we do hypothesis testing for the proportion, we still need to remember all those six steps of hypothesis testing. So therefore, for the proportion, the test statistic will be Z um, stat, which will be the sampling distribution formula of proportion, where it will be the sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by the standard error which is 
the population proportion times one minus the population proportion divided by n. And remember, if your sample proportion is not given, therefore they will be giving you your x observations, which are your number of observation that satisfies that sample. And you can calculate the population, the sample proportion by dividing the x observations with your sample size. Let's go ahead and look at an example of how we do the hypothesis testing for the proportion. A marketing company claims that it receives 8% response from its mailing. To test the claim, a random sample of 500 were surveyed with 25 responses. Test at alpha 0.05 level of significance. So we need to do a hypothesis testing at alpha 0.05. We know the six steps of hypothesis testing. So in this, they didn't give us the sample proportion, but they gave us the X observation, which are 25 responses. So we can calculate P. So the first step is to state the null hypothesis and alternative. And then we're going to go and do step number two to choose what level of significance is there, identify what is given in relation to the sample size, um, there's a population prop sample proportions as well. And then we're going to determine the appropriate test. So because we're doing for the proportion, always for the proportion, we use the Z test. And then we determine the critical value by going to the normal table to find the critical value. So depending on your null hypothesis, so depending on your alternative hypothesis sign, if it's a two-tail test, we're going to divide alpha by two and go find Z using the Z values using the Z alpha divided by two. If it's a one-tail test, we're just going to use Z alpha to find those region of rejection. And then we're going to calculate and compute the test statistics and make a decision and then do a conclusion. So using our statement for the marketing campaign stating the null hypothesis we know that they said that it was eight percent so therefore our null hypothesis will meet, will say the population proportion will be equals to eight percent or 0 0.08 the alternative will say it is not so the alternative hypothesis says the population proportion is not equal to 0 0.08. Step number two is to state what we are given. Our level of significance is 0 0.05, N is 500, which was the sample size, and we needed to calculate P because P was 25 divided by the 500, which our P is 0 0.05. Step number three is to state what test we're doing. We're doing a, T, a, a, a Z test. So step number four is to find the critical value. We know that if we're doing Z alpha divided by two, because this will be the, let me get a pen. So we know that for to find the critical value, this is Z alpha divided by two. And by now you should know that Z 0, 0.05 divided by two, which is Z of 0, 0.0250 is the same as 1,96. And since it is a two-sided test, so it will have the negative and the positive side of the rejection area so we can identify clearly identify where our region of rejections will be and we 
clearly mark them. Step number five is to calculate the test statistic. Substituting the value into the formula, our P is 0 0.05, our population proportion is 0 0.08. Divide by the square root of population proportion of 0, 0,08, 1 minus 0, 0,08, divide by 500. And solve the whole equation, we get negative 2.47. So since it is a negative, so it will fall inside the rejection area. And therefore, we can conclude by saying we reject the null hypothesis at alpha 0, 0,05 and we make our conclusion by saying there is sufficient evidence to reject the company claim of 8% response rate. So since we're using the Z test, we can also make a decision because with this one, we are making the decision based on the Z test and the critical value. So for Z, we can use the P value. We can use our Z test to go find the P value. Remember that this is the same as your Z value. And if I go to the normal, the norm, cumulative normal distribution table and I look for minus 2.47 on the table, so it means if this is the table on the side, I will look for 2.4 and then at the top, I'll look for 0, 0.07. And the value that I will find where they both meet there, that will be my P value. So we can use the Z table to go find the P value. And the p-value, if you go to your table right now and look at your p-value, I can quickly look at my one. Um, it is zero. I'm not going to show you my table. I'm just going to go to the table straight from here. I, I hope you, you still know how to find the values. So have you found the value? What is the value there on the P? Minus 2.47. It is 0, 0,068. It's 0, 0,068. So since this is a two-tailed test, remember, when it is two-tailed test, we say two times the p-value, the probability you find on the table. Remember that. So you must always remember that for a two-tailed test, it will be two times the p-value, or you're going to add the p-value to itself. And that's how you will find the p-value. And we know that we can make the same decision because the, the decision rule says if the value of your p-value is less than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. So based on the same information, we know that our p-value on the table, we found that it was 0, 0,068. But because there are two sides, we need to multiply those by two. And we find that the p-value is 0, 0,0136. And we're going to reject the null hypothesis because our p-value of 0, 0,136, it is less than the level of significance, which was 0, 0,05. And then we make the same decision. Any questions before we start with the exercises? So we still repeat the same thing that we have learned for the past three weeks. Three weeks. And always remember that you need to know all the six steps of hypothesis testing because the questions that might they might ask you might be 
relating to all the six in your options, they might have given you all the six steps of hypothesis testing and ask you to make a decision. Are there any questions before we begin? No, no questions no. now. Okay. Okay, so let's look at exercises. So this one we, we can do it together and then I will give you a chance to do the other exercises on your own and then we do a feedback. Okay. An airline claims that only 6% of all luggages is never found. In a random sample of 17 out of 200 pieces of lost luggage are not found. Test this hypothesis. They gave us the null hypothesis that the population proportion is equals to 0, 0,06 against the alternative hypothesis, which states that the population proportion is greater than 0, 0,06. Which of the following statement is incorrect? First, let's start unpacking the question. What have they given us on here? So that we, we are given the population proportion of 6%. We are given the X value. We are given the N. And we are told what the hypothesis testing is. Remember, with the null hypothesis, we said it always has to have an equality sign, but we can just ignore it because it's always going to have an equal sign. Sometimes they just put equal. But what is very important, it is the value of the alternative or the sign in your alternative hypothesis. And this sign is, says it's greater than, and when it's greater than, therefore it means this is A1, tail test and then it means if it's a one tail test our critical value when we go find the critical value we're going to use one side of things if we're going to make a decision we're going to find two side of the uh, rejection areas if we're going to find the p value we're only going to find the value on the table so if I scan through the options so that we don't waste a lot of time, I can see that on here they're asking for P, standard error, test statistics, P value, and the null, and within the decision. So I can use the six steps of, or the five steps of making a decision using the P value. So the first uh, step was to state the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. They already stated that, so I don't have to worry about it. The second step is state what you are given. We already somehow stated what we are given, but we can also calculate what P is in terms of that. So our P is X over N and our X is 17 over 200. And what do you get when you do the calculation? 0, 0, 0, 0, so number statement number one is correct. Our P is 0, 0, 0,085. Are you saying that is correct? Yes. Okay. So that is the P, uh, but we can just continue and validate the other statements as well, unless the question was looking for the incorrect one. But we know that the question says we need to find the correct one, but we can do all of them. So these two are related because the, the 
uh, question number three says we need to find the test statistic and the question number three says we need to find the standard error and since we're doing for the proportion we can go and calculate the standard error which will be the standard error of proportions will be the square root of your population proportion one minus population proportion divide by n so substitute the values our population proportion always given also in the in the hypothesis testing so this will be 0 0,06 times 1 minus 0 0,06 divided by our n is 200 so do the calculation Zero comma zero one six seven nine. Zero comma zero one six seven nine. So yes. which, which is not that. And calculate the test statistic. So our test statistic will be Z stat. I'm just gonna write the formula and then you can Let's do it this way. So it will be the P minus the population proportion divided by the square root of your population proportion, one minus population proportion divided by, oh, divide by N. divide by n so we can substitute the values substituting the values into the we already calculated what our standard error is because we calculated it in number two so here we just substitute the values so we have 0 comma 0 085 minus 0 comma 0 6 divide by 0,01679 because we already calculated the standard error. And what do you get? 0 0.08 1.48873 We get 1.48873 which is not which is not that. Then, uh, remember, because this is a Z test, so we need to take it to two decimal. So when we take it to two decimal, this will be 1,49. Ne? So we need to take this value We need to go to the Z table and look for, and remember you're going to get it on the bigger side of the table. So we're going to get one, one comma four nine. So you need to go to the positive side of the table and look for one comma four nine. That will be the last column. And that will give you zero comma three zero comma nine three. I I think it's zero comma nine three one nine. I think it's one nine at the end. Okay, so it is zero comma nine three one one nine. nine. Okay, yes. so but you need to you need to be very careful with this because 
we used the greater than. So therefore, our p-value here, we're going to find, remember, our p-value is always going to be for the small area. So we're always looking for the value at the small area. So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.9 three one uh let me go back uh did you say one nine yes one nine yes zero comma nine three one nine and therefore that will give you how much one minus zero comma nine three one nine gives you That's zero comma zero six eight one Zero comma zero six eight one six eight one, which then also this is not correct, and therefore because we're using is this, it yes uh, when you are calculating standard error on the formula the substitutions you said. Look at the formula, then look at the substitution. You said 0, 0,06 instead of 0, 0,08. What 0, 0,08? On the, on the formula for standard error. Yeah. Are you referring to Was it supposed here? to be P? Oh. Are, are you referring to these values here? Um, it's 0 0.06. That's what I can see. It's not 0 0.08. We're using the population proportions. So our population proportion yes. is 0 0.06. So we substitute 0 0.06. So then it's zero. 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.06. I think so what you say, Ms. Liz, you, 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 you see where it's uh, 0 0.06 brackets 1 minus 0 0.0. Instead of 8, you should have written 6, but the answer is the same. This, no, it is my handwriting is bad, then I'm, I'm going to assume that. I'm going to assume that you guys think this is 8. This is 6. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I thought it's 8. Okay, that is why we are used to writing with a, uh, what do you call this thing now? With laptops. So this handwriting thing, I've, I've never been good with handwriting. So also do not get confused here yeah, as well. This is six, you see my six looks like an eight. This is six here yeah, at the end. And I'm going to hope and assume that everybody calculated this correctly. Okay, so. Yes. Okay, so now we need to come to step number five. And step number five, the decision says, if the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Ne? So is the how much our alpha is, they didn't give us alpha on the statement, but they gave us alpha here. So we know what alpha is. Our alpha is 0, 0,10. Our p-value is 0, 0,0. Zero. Six eight one zero comma zero six eight one and at zero comma zero six eight one our p value is less than our alpha so we reject the null hypothesis so then we have a problem because we have two statements that are the same 
unless if their p value they left it as a zero comma zero instead of they left the p value as zero comma zero nine three one zero comma nine three one nine so therefore it's bigger than so it will not be less it will be greater than therefore we do not reject and this statement says we reject so that won't be correct Try and answer exercise two. Find the incorrect answer. Are we winning? Yes, just going through the we're currently just going through the question.
Okay. Mm. We have two answers that one is option two and one the other one says option three. <clears throat> Others, are you winning? One minute. You must let me know when you're done, eh? since you said one minute. Done. Okay, others, are you all done? Yes, done. Okay, so let's let's do the feedback. So we're gonna go through statement by statement because I'm not gonna go through and ask you for the six steps of hypothesis. <clears throat> so, is step number one correct based on the statement? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is correct because this statement says we need to determine whether the true proportion of students oh, sorry, of children with ASD in special needs schools in the population is 0 0.75. So they never mentioned anything about greater than or less than and so forth. So therefore it means it's an equality and the alternative will be it is not equal. So this statement is correct. We're looking for the incorrect statement. Step number two, if this is a two-tailed test, what will be the critical value? So we are given alpha, so we know that our critical value, we find it using Z alpha divided by two, and with alpha of 0 0.05, our Z critical value will be 0 0.25. And we've been dealing with this 0 0.025. We know that this will be 1 comma, nine six so step number option number two is correct so <clears throat> if it was a one tail test then the critical value wouldn't be one comma nine six so you need to also know how to work out the critical value step number oh sorry option number three the value of the test statistic is minus 0, uh, minus 1, 
zero nine. So we know that the formula is Z is equals to or Z that is equals to P minus the population proportion divided by the population proportion one minus population proportion divided by N. And what is our P? Did you calculate P? P is X over N. Our P is 0 0.7. So it's 0 0.7 divided by 100, which is 0 0.7. So 0 0.7 minus 0 0.75, because our population proportion, we can find it in the hypothesis testing, in the null hypothesis testing or the alternative. And 0, 0,75 times 1 minus 0, 0,75 divided by 100. And what do you get? What is our What is the Z uh, test statistic? Uh, the minus 1.54. Sorry. The test is as minus 1.154. So we need to leave it to two decimals. So it's just 1.115. One, one right. Okay. Now. Therefore, it means this is incorrect, but we can go through the whole um, questions. Uh, number four says the p-value is this. So we need to go use this value of minus 1,54. Go to the table, look for the p-value. And once you get the p-value, you're going to say two times the value you find on the table. So go find the value on the table using 1, 1,15. Let me also go to the table. Minus 1, 1,1. 1. 1 comma 1 0 comma 1 2 5 1 0 comma 1 2 5, 5 1 which is the same no oh two times 0 comma repeat sorry 1 0 comma 1 2 5 1 and this is uh, 0, 0,2502. 0, 0, 0,2502, which means that is correct. So you can use the critical value to make a decision, or you can use the p value to make a decision. Um, because now our critical value, if we use the critical value, we have two sides of the critical value, and we know this is 1,96, which is minus, and this is 1,96, and we take oh, not that value, but this value of ours. Where does it fall? It falls in the do not reject. I don't, I, I, sometimes I don't know. Where does minus 1, 1,15 fall? It will fall somewhere in the do not reject. And we do not reject the null hypothesis, which is correct. Therefore, you know that option three is the only 
incorrect statement. Um, sometimes if you don't want to use the critical value, so this is the critical value and the test statistic, you can use the p-value. So since we know what the p-value is, we can use the p-value of 0, 0,25 and if it's less than 0, 0, 0,05, we reject the null hypothesis. So we 2.5 is greater than, so therefore we do not reject. So whether you use the p-value or you use the critical value and the test statistic, we can still find the same conclusion. Okay. So let's move on with other questions. A practicing statistician wants to test the following hypothesis at 5% level of significance. The null hypothesis is that pro population proportion is equals to 0 0.25. The alternative population proportion is not equal. This is a two-tailed test. From a sample of 100, our P we are given it's 0, 0.22. What is the value of our test statistic? So it means you need to go calculate the test statistic. You know the formula, write the formula and calculate. Are we done? Should be easy and quick. Are we winning? I think so. Are we done? Yes. 
Let's substitute and calculate. Our P was given to us, which is 0, 0,22 minus population proportion. We find it in the hypothesis, which is 0, 0,25 divided by. Zero comma two five times one minus zero comma two five divided by our N, which is hundred. And what do you get? Minus zero comma Minus zero comma zero comma six nine, which is option option three. Next question. Same, based on the same information that we had, our Z state is minus 0, 0,69. And we know that we're doing a two, a two tail test. So you need to go to the table using these two values oh sorry this z value to go find the p value i'm not gonna tell you what you need to do i just want to see your answers Are you winning? Are we winning? Should be easy, straightforward. You go to the table, go look for the value. And we're doing a two tape. If the two tail is the value multiplied by two, am I right? Yes. But then the value is not there. Yep. Okay, so let's see. 
So the, 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 the table value is, is number three. And, and if you multiply that by two, that is not on, the, on one of the options. Okay. So because it's a two tail, so we're going to say two times. 0 0.2451. That's what you get. And mm -hmm. when you multiply this, you get 0 0.4902. I'm going to tell you that there is actually a a type a typo. I'm okay, going to okay. assume, <laughs> I'm going to assume on this it was a typo, then Option number one should be the right option. Um, I don't know how I can find the erratas of the 2020. Uh, did I take this from the 2020? Yes, the 2020. Tutorial letter 101. Okay. Next question. We give it at least ninety five percent at least 95% of equipment that have, that he supplied to a factory conform to the specification. An examination of 700 pieces of equipment reveals that 53 are faulty. Do this provide sufficient evidence to reject the manufacturer's claim? If we use alpha at 0, 0,01, to perform the test, which one of the following statement is correct? Let me know when you are done.
Are we winning? Are we done? Okay. Let's start at the at the top. The manufacturer wants to claim at least ninety five percent. Therefore, it means uh, this will be greater than or equal of the equipment so at least greater than or equal that will be the equipment uh, that he supplied to the factory which is conformed to the specification and 700 of them of the pieces of equipment equipment revealed that 53 are faulty and we are also given the alpha of 0 0.01 so we know that we given x and n so we can calculate p which is 53 over 700 what do you get 0, 0,0757. 0, 0,0757, which means we have found our correct answer. You can also check the rest of the other answers. Um, you can calculate the Z, the Z stat just to check the other question the other statements our p we just calculated it is 0 0,0757 minus our population 0 comma 95 divided by the square root of 0, 0, 0, 0,95 times 1 minus 0, 0,95 divided by uh, 700. What do you get? Did you calculate that? Negative. Of minus 106.14. 0.14. So it means that is incorrect, that is incorrect. And we told that the alpha is 0, 0,01. This is incorrect because it says it's 5%. Uh, you can also use either the p value or the critical value because we're looking at one-sided test so our critical value will be z z alpha and therefore our critical value will be z of 0 comma 0 1 which will be minus 2.33 it will we, we will find it on 2.33 anyway um and then you can look at 
whether you are rejecting the null hypothesis or they or you accepting the null hypothesis based on the critical value and the and the z stat or you can use your z stat to go find the p value which you might not find because the table i don't think it goes up to 136 it stops at 50 or something okay so our correct answer will be option number one next question let's check the time way ma i didn't even check the time we are way out of time so there are other exercises that you can do so you have the notes i've posted it uh, there is exercise six exercise seven eight and i will see you on saturday when we do questions relating to hypothesis testing so i will find more questions um for this saturday and then we will do again i think probably the following wednesday if just before you go submit um, i think we're still on time on track so on saturday we will do let me just go to the calendar quickly So we are on the 14th. So Saturday we will do the activity. Um, and then we I, I think I'm gonna give you a break on the 21st. So we're not gonna have a class on, on the 21st, but then we're going to meet on the 24th in preparation to do the final final exercises or activities relating to um hypothesis testing and then after that then we introduce chi squared if there are no questions thank you for coming i know that we took longer than we supposed to and enjoy the rest of the evening Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.